All right, so today I'm going to show you my solar system. I got a, a new solar panel. I still have the HQST uh, solar suitcase, and I got a little one on the roof. So I'm going to just kind of review everything. I'm going to show you how I have uh, power in the trailer itself. So my wall sockets are working right now. It's charging uh, this camera and it's charging my phone. And over here, you can see I have a DVD player and a TV. I have the Star Trek DVD in here. Um, and it just said, it's just on the beginning uh, thing. I still need to hit play to start it. Okay, but let's go outside and take a look at what I have going on. Okay, the thing is, I'm I'm in the shade. I'm about 10,000 feet in elevation. It's about 46 degrees. But I have this old battery. This battery is a trash battery. When I uh, bought my new ones, I didn't turn this one and I kept it. And I'm glad I did because I can still use it. Uh, as long as I'm putting energy in it, it's transferring it over into the trailer. So I got two solar panels hooked up to this battery right now. <clears throat> this is a Renegy Vo Voyager charge controller, a 20 amp, and it's waterproof. <clears throat> this is my pure sine wave inverter, a thousand watts. You can see I have an extension cord hooked up to it. Um, here's my HQST 100 watt solar suitcase. Down here is my Sun Power 100 watt flexible solar panel. Um, this one was expensive. I bought this one as a kit with that uh, Voyager waterproof controller and the cables. This was $395, so almost $400. The, flex, uh, the solar suitcase was just a little more than $200. So this was double the price. I don't know yet if this was worth the price, but time will tell. Um, I could still mount this somewhere on the trailer if I wanted to, or I could lay it on the back of the truck on top of that uh, bed cover. So you can see I have the extension cord plugged into the inverter, pure sine wave inverter. Then I got both panels on this battery. And you can see here, here's the 30 amp cord coming out of the trailer. I have an adapter hooked onto it and it's going into this extension cord. There's a little light on this extension cord. So here's a really old solar charge controller 7 amp max and right now you can see it's charging the house battery or the trailer battery. This is for the lights and the heater and if I wanted to uh, the refrigerator. On the roof of this trailer is like a 10 watt 15 watt solar panel that has been there since the trailer was built trailers a 1990 not a 1996 shadow cruiser silhouette t139 i was told when i bought this trailer the uh, little solar panel on the roof didn't work well they had the wiring all messed up i was able to figure it out and that panel does work it kind of acts like a trickle charger to that battery on the side. But uh, I can also, I, what I'm gonna do too, 
that laptop needs to be charged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that laptop and plug it in. See, there's an outlet there and then my outlet over there. So when these charge up, I'm going to plug in my laptop to that wall outlet and charge it. So it's convenient. This is nice and convenient um, that I'm able to use my wall outlet. So it's like I have shore power plugged in into the trailer. Oh, the other thing with the house trailer, and it's, you know, it's just on the side, so right underneath here. That also powers my radio. I got a radio here. See, I don't have to worry about running down the trailer battery oh, with this setup. I'm using, you know, right now it's just for the lights. Everything else is being powered by that uh, old battery. And, you know, it normally doesn't hold that good of a charge. But with me, you know, putting power into it, it's just put, uh, transferring it into the uh, sine wave, pure sine wave inverter, and then powering the inside of the trailer. So there you go. Uh, now this only works during the day. You know, at night, this does not work. The other thing is, is this pure sine wave inverter is not waterproof. So if it's cloudy, if it's raining, I can't have, you know, I, I, I wouldn't leave this outside. Same thing with the HQST solar panel. That's not waterproof. The uh, charge controller is not waterproof. Let's see, it's saying 12.9 volts, 78%, 4.5 amps, 4.4, let's see, 24 degrees Celsius. The other thing is, um, you might want not want to leave this out like this if you was to take your vehicle and go for a ride. <laughs> Someone might take all this stuff when you're gone. So that's another thing, you know, you're having to move a lot of stuff uh, around. Um, but the thing is, I'm parked in the shade and I got solar going on and I'll have this solar throughout the day. Okay, so one last thing. I went ahead and uh, hooked the um, laptop, or I uh, plugged in the laptop into that wall socket. So my laptop now is charging and the camera's charging. The cell phone is fine, it's charged. So now I'll just let this laptop charge. And if I needed to, I could go ahead and use it now while it's charging. And if I wanted to, I can watch a DVD. So I think this is going to work out pretty good. Um, as long as the weather conditions are, you know, good. And this is something for the daytime use. I don't have uh, the, the batteries to store the power for this at night, and I don't care. I like listening to CDs and the radio. I got old time radio CDs. Just a couple of things to point out on this HQST solar. <clears throat> the tape they've used, it doesn't stick very well. So I'm going to need to get some new double-sided tape. And that's not a big issue. I still like this uh, solar panel. The other thing is though, which is a little annoying, is these leads, those uh, cables, pull out pretty easily from the charge controller. I think I've seen that uh, on, a, on another comment or YouTube video. But again, I still really like this uh, solar panel, this HQST solar suitcase. But I thought I needed to point those two things out. Okay, one last thing. You know, with the uh, flexible, lightweight solar panel, like I said before, I could lay it on here and it wouldn't be a problem. This, if I tried to lay it probably on here, I'd scratch the paint up. 
so you know again you know that's it's not an issue um, with this panel but that one you know I, I can use it you know to uh, put on the back of the truck or to just flip on the top of the trailer and then uh, it'd be out of sight I thought I should point that out too